Hey guys, this is a pretty special moment. Um, making it up as we go along. Sweet, Greg Voros, we call him Old World. Sweet Corey, what is your last name? Terrell. I, didn't, I never even knew you that. You never knew my last name was never Terrell? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got that in a trivia question. But I've known you for a long time. Terrell. Well, it was originally uh, Bukovac, but yeah, I had yeah. to change it. <laughs> I knew you back in the old days when you used to work at that music store in Bellevue. Yeah, that's right. But anyway, I sold you a '74 Telecaster that I I actually almost begged you not to buy. Mm. You were so <laughs> impulsive. That's not a joke. Uh, you, you were so impulsive. You 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 still bought it. I am very. And impulsive. you probably made tons of money off of it. Tell them about that time when I bought that that, that guitar with plunk in one chord. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the AJ, that was the greatest story, man. <laughs> Switch with me. Here, uh, this, with this was going back. This was going back a couple years. I don't even know yeah, how long yeah, it works. And, yeah, and uh, yeah. I think you and I and Eric were chatting about just that in the office that you can hear a, a guitar's bones if it's a acoustic guitar just yeah. by playing one chord on it. You know if it's got it or not. You definitely. We walked out of Eric's office and you're like, "Hey, what is that?" An AJ? And I'm like, "Yeah, it's like a 37 or 38 Advanced Jumbo." And he's like, "Let me check it out, man." And literally he picked it up after that conversation. He was like. I'll take it, bro. <laughs> Just like that, it was the best ever. <laughs> One chord. It, it was a great guitar, too. It was a great guitar. Yeah. Okay, we're at Groom Guitars. That's right. We're upstairs in the sacred the inner sanctum. Of what floor, this is, what floor this are is, we on? We're on the second, second floor. We've got to talk a little loud, boys, because because the people always complain that the iPhone mic doesn't pick up all the details. Got it. So uh, we don't really have a lot of high-tech recording gear, but we do have some high-tech instruments. Yes, switch back. Yeah, switch back. Uh, we're starting this monthly thing where we, we we come in and we we try out different guitars. For, for the, and, uh, we talk about do. guitars. We're gonna talk about everything that um, we have available. You're like the Ed for McMahon. You you're Johnny Carson. And, I'm uh, Ed McMahon. Yeah, you're. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm good with Johnny. I'm man. Ed McMahon. <laughs> yeah, because I'm the one boozing it up and everything, you know. Um, we, we were thinking, well, what kind of guitar should we try? Should we should we have Uncle Larry go around and pick out some of his favorites in the store? And then we, I happened to notice on the second floor, there's four maple neck strats just sitting there, and I thought, well, let's 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 do a maple neck strat uh, mm -hmm. comparison. I love it. Um, I couldn't think of a reason two why tone, we shouldn't. Two tone fifty eight. There's a two tone fifty eight. Two tone. I think we're just two two tone fifty eight. Two tone fifty eight. A three tone fifty eight. Yeah. Two tone fifty eight. That's a fifty seven. Fifty seven. And this is a fifty eight as well. And he's got a fifty nine. Let's talk about. We got the other fifty eight. Let's talk about the history of the Fender Stratocaster for all those out there. Everybody knows about old strats, but let's just give them the cursory. Uh, you know, just let's just say you were new to the homeschooling show. First year of the Fender Stratocaster. 54. 54. The early ones are very identifiable mm -hmm. because you can always tell a 54 or an early 55 in a photo because the way the grain looks in the wood. Why is that great? Well, well a lot of those early ones ash. were ash. And they got that wide yeah. ass grain. That's it. And it's, and and it's uh, very visible and it's right there. The other thing that always gets me on a 54, both early, mid, or late, yeah. is that dynamite soft v neck. They got the dynamite mm -hmm. v necks. This 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 has a nice this has this is fifty eight but this has a, this has a little bit more of a pronounced yeah. name, but yes you're right about that soft uh, wave. And can't, I, you can't reproduce that the, with the custom. I haven't seen something from the custom right. shop that got it. They, I've seen great necks come from the custom shop, but I've never seen that neck. That's a special neck. Yeah. Um, Uncle Larry, full disclaimer. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to make any disclaimers because disclaimers are a sign of weakness, but. Uh, I've said many times that I'm not a big fan of the Maple Neck Stratocasters, and Corey wants to argue with me about that. I don't want to argue. And he's a good I arguer. Just, he's really no, good. Well, nobody's going to argue. We're going to. You're going to. Here's you're, the reason why. So I, I'm going to. I'm going to state my case, and then and then Corey can tell you how he feels, which is incorrect. Um, when I I'm going to be incorrect. <laughs> Going into. I haven't said anything yet, man. Okay. I'm just like, listening to you, uh, boy. Is it, you know. The thing about maple neck strats that I've always struggled with, I think they're beautiful instruments. I think they look amazing. They always play amazing. They're usually very lightweight, which is very nice, especially 55s and 56s. They're, they have this, they, they got a batch of really lightweight wood right on it. Ash. And 
tell he's in the Strats right now. Like, but, but here's the thing. My first old Strat, well, my second old Strat was a Maple Lake Strat. I was 56, and I was very excited to get it. And when I started trying to record it, I noticed that it was a little too glassy uh -huh. and devoid of mid-range to get the kind of results that I was looking for. Uh, and, I, and everyone I've tried since then, I always think they're a little too bright and they don't have any mid-range and they don't have the depth of tone that, that a slab board or later rosewood one does because these pickups are plenty bright enough and you certainly don't need to, ex to accentuate that anymore with that hard ass maple neck. Probably a lot of people out there are arguing this fact and that's all good, that's what's great about guitars. Everybody's got an opinion. Uh, now, Corey. Well, it, you're, you're definitely going to have the experience when it comes to obviously being in the studio and having your choice of instrument and why you're choosing that instrument more so than me. I don't have an extensive, there's nothing behind me recording wise that you're going to go, oh yeah, you know, I really like you I on understand. that. I understand. But I like what I like. Yes, and you've been playing guitar your whole life. I've been playing guitar for mm -hmm. many years. Yeah. I think that let, let's 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 pull it back to, to somebody yeah. who's at my level. Yeah. It's got to be okay at some point to say I prefer the feel of the maple. Now, what what if I told you that I can't hear those frequencies mm -hmm. that you are picking out that you can hear? Whether I can or not. I might, my ear might not be tuned to it because that's not what I do for a living. I'm, I'm really playing for more, for yeah. fun. And I, and, I, and I do prefer a maple yeah. fingerboard. Now, I have a Strat. Yeah. It's a beautiful Strat, mid-90s Stratocaster mm -hmm. with a rosewood fingerboard. Right. I have the exact same model, different color, yep. exact same year, same model that has a maple fingerboard and that's the one I grab yeah. all the time. Okay. Because I just like it. I just like playing it better. Where are you at with Strats? Maple or rosewood? Oh, rosewood, yeah. But <clears throat> all day long yeah but but here's the thing man like there's a, a time and a place for a maple board strat i think that time and a place is is likely the same time you would find yourself picking a telly yeah you know yeah. it almost makes for a great telly substitute yeah. because of that 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 yeah that troubliness to it you know what i mean yeah. but then with regards to tellies um whether i mean all, all maple board tellies there's that yeah. thing where it's a country telly or a rock and roll telly. yeah right you, you know what i mean yeah. So with that, I still think you could have a maple board rock and roll strat, yeah. but a lot of times they're not going to be as as, as user f user friendly is fine, but they're not going to be able to. They don't work for everything. Mm -hmm. They don't work for everything. Where if you had say uh, a rosewood board Les Paul, not even to say well humbuckers make a huge difference, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just think that um, it's it's a way more usable instrument. Yeah. It's way more versatile. It's way but it, but but the maple board strat gives you a thing. Yeah. It gives you that really crystal bite. Bite. Yeah, tons of bite. And I, I've noticed the same. That this as well with maple board um, strats. Um, they don't sound. I don't think as good when you when you get really heavy on your attack on them. Yeah. There's something that happens where the note turns more of a splat than yeah. than a musical thing to totally. it. I don't know what, what the deal is with that because you're pressing against the fret, but the maple right. does something. To yes. it. I'm not quite sure what it is. Yes. Um, you, uh, know, you already almost now, have a spank to it when you play normal. That's right. Let now, alone. let me ask a question from a repair standpoint. Somebody who's repaired both maple fingerboard sure. instruments, rosewood fingerboard instruments. As far as the frets being held in, mm -hmm. Is there is there a difference between how maple will hold a fret in and no. rosewood? Not really. The, the rosewood is a little softer. What about ebony? Ebony is, is harder, which makes it more brittle. So it's just really just more of a pain in the. In, in, in the but if something's fretted correctly, it's fretted correctly. It's fretted correctly. Yeah. A maple board is not easy. It's not very forgiving. Right. You know, and whatever you could see under the. Expo exposed tang itself. Right. You have to keep all your damage on the inside of it so none of it could be seen. And sometimes right. when you're cleaning out slots, maple, once you glue a piece of tear out back, that's when you see it with a dark line around it. 
Ebony is more forgiving, although it's way more chippier than maple, especially dry ebony. Totally. But when you glue those pieces back to make it right, it's never right because yeah. the wood always um, shines differently than super glue that was used to put those pieces back. So if you put it in the light, it always it always looks off. It never looks right. Um, repair person, rosewood. That's yeah, that's it's like preferred. Play -Doh. You can do whatever you want. You could do a lot. Yeah. You could do a lot with it, and yeah. um, you could do a lot. With and it doesn't take that much effort to keep a fret anchored in, mm -hmm. inside of, of the slot itself. So I, 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 the hardest guitars, electric guitars in history, to easy. refret. Oh, easy. Uh, uh, it's let me guess. Can I guess? Yeah, go for it. Uh, the, the 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 early '70s fenders that were dipped in polyurethane. <laughs> no, no, right? no, probably no. not. You know why? No, no you know okay. why? Because. You can get those frets out, and that usually comes with doing a, a refret with a with a refinished board. And once you knock all that poly off of it, you can actually go back with nitro, have it sink right, frets back okay. over the top, and it's great. The hardest refret ever in the history of ever's yes. is something that I've done for you probably ten of yeah. since I've known you. Les Paul Custom. Les Paul Custom from the seventies. Yeah, the the binding isn't 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 the the binding itself is rolled almost like a half circle, right. so it doesn't go into the bevel of the fret, right? Right. So every time it gets refretted with those fretless wonder right. type frets on Black Beauties, you know, right. customs. Mm -hmm. Every time they do that, um, either the fret job is completely ruined because so much of the binding is actually filed away to make it a decent looking fret end, mm -hmm. or there's usually um, no side to side because the bevel comes in so hard. Mm -hmm. So the only if there's repair guys out there that are doing 1970s Les Paul custom refrets. Yeah. The only way to do it, we actually got one up in the shop right now. I, I've been doing it this way for about 12 years, and the only way to do it is when you're putting in your frets, don't put any bevel on them. Keep it out of 45 when you put them in. Mm -hmm. And then you take the file itself, and it rides the top of the binding, and you make it a, a non-bevel, meaning a 45. Not an angled bevel, just a straight 45. And then you go back and manicure the sides to give the illusion of a bevel. So with that, you're not gonna feel it, but the straight bevel yeah. will keep you another 30 second on either side of the low E and the high E. So if you do that fret job right, you can actually do a vibrato on the high E without pulling it off. Right. But you have to do that with a, with a 45 on that bevel where it's not done. Right. And if it's not done that way, that's the reason people don't like them. Remember that episode of Jackass when they had to do, when they did off-road tattoo? Yes, yes. we're do, not we're not doing that, are we? You do an off-road refret. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got you, bro. <laughs> Dude, in the Impala. In the Impala. <laughs> hey, I tried. Uh, that'd be amazing. Okay, so what do we got here? Yeah, we, we, got, we have to use uh, uh, Rob's new Porsche. You, you gotta, there's a back seat. We in got there. Um, and a rubber mat. <laughs> let's on. just let's compare these strictly. Hold, hold these oh, up to the camera. camera. Give, let's just give them a real close look. Uh, which one's the prettiest? I think we got to get a little closer, don't we? Here's, there's another one over here. Don't forget this guy. Yep. We got some good looking Kind of shit lighting in here. Man, but it is cool. It's a little shit, but you can see. Which one's the I'm coolest think, I'm thinking this two-tone 58, man. This one's pretty sick. I think the one with the screws. Can we start with this one? Yeah. Let's hear him. Uh, this guitar's got a bit of a... Let's go in numerical order. You got the 57. Okay. Do the 57, both 58s, and then the, okay. and then the 59. You're going to be the tech? You holding that? Okay. This is the first one? First one. Number one. Okay, cool story. Uh, look at those extra. Here, show them the, the screw holes. See that? What's that from, Greggy? I, I, I have a theory. I, yeah. You have a theory? The theory I would imagine we shared is when the guard cup, that was their solution to stop the cupping guards to just screw it straight up against the body. Right. Typical. It's the only uh, thing warping, that makes sense. Warping of the yeah, guard. Yeah, cupping of the guard. Which actually, yeah, it was probably bowing. The guard was probably yeah. bowing and they had mm -hmm. these brad nails and they shot these brad nails and pretty mm -hmm. even. They did a fine job. Now the question was, wh were we going to go ahead and remove them, plug the guard, no. do the same thing? No. It kind of adds to the story, so we left I it. I like it. Know? I think it looks cool. This is a guitar, okay, good weight. Uh, let me feel it. Let me just real quickly, let's just feel the lightest one. That was pretty light. Mm -hmm. That's pretty light. Uh, that one's pretty light too. This one's light. Uh, I, shit, they're all light. They're all pretty good weight. Let's hear this bad boy. Um, uh, I got the uh, Ebo Customs uh, Del Rio here. I brought 
a very small pedal board just so we can, and I'll play very quietly so, because my the phone's got that compressor thing, so if I play loud and it, it takes a minute for it to recover, so I'll play, I won't play loud. But, so here's our, is that a, should we turn that delay up a little bit? Is that a little too, uh, is that enough? Okay, bridge pickup. But but uh, and the fact that they the one thing that Leo should have done put its own control on the bridge pickup. Out of all these guitars, you know, he just he chose not to do that. The, he called it the takeoff pickup. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So like the uh, the one pickup that needs its own control the most, he he didn't put it on there. But you know, we figured out that cool way you can lay a wire without soldering. Uh, you can lay a wire in there, and you can get that tone control. You can wrap it over. You switch. can wrap it over, switch without soldering. Non-invasive. Yeah, yeah totally it works great. So that's cool. I, I do that on all my strats. Switch in there, you know, yeah, yeah. That, right? You got there. Oh, I've never seen set up and the way, the way it works for me, I would give that the neck shape for the way I would give that between 7.5 and 8 for my for my take. Alright, this is a uh, two-tone 58. Two-tone 58. So early, early 58. If I remember correctly, that's a January 58. Yeah. A little bit yeah, bigger yeah. neck, still very comfy. We tuned all these, right? Well, you were supposed to. Let's check that out. Let's check that out. Uh, we're not doing our duties. Yeah. We're not doing our duties. Totally different acoustic resonance. Amazing. They're all so yeah. different. Uh, bridge pickup. Stratocaster uh, have no idea why the guitar starts intermittently cutting off. Uh, 
static electricity builds up on the pickguard. Mm -hmm. People are flogging on a Stratocaster. It causes the pickups to short out for a brief little. Just for like a second. It's, it's really strange. You Is that true? That? Oh, yeah. I've seen it all I, the time. I've never. I've yeah, never that's, seen I've it. seen it happen many times. I've seen okay. anybody out there ever no. experienced that? It just seems like it, just, it seems like it would be confused with them like banging up against. The yeah, no, I see. It's like literally, people yeah, have trouble yeah. static building up on the pickguard strap. Very strange. It happens. I've seen it. Many I want to make a uh, an observation. Please. That's a very vocal instrument. Very, 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 very. There is a very, there's a lot going on. Yeah, it is. It's really nice. That middle that middle pickup. I'm not normally a big middle pickup fan. No, That's a great sounding middle lovely. pickup. It's lovely. Who's fun is that? I don't know. It was. That's not. It's good. It's good. Yeah, he's good. All right, let's move on to the. Uh, what's the next he's one? He's got he's got fifty eight. Fifty eight. Well, should we talk about the prices on these two? Are we doing that? Yeah, we can get into that. We'll get into that after. Forty bucks a piece. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'll take uh, two. Of them. Let's check the tuning on this. This is clean. This is super clean. Yeah, yeah. In tune, man, acoustically, right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Ooh. This one's got the most bang for the buck acoustically. So far. Right. Well, it's in tune too. It's really ringing, singing. Quite nice. Okay, here's the bridge pickup. Ready? Everything's up. hardware added to it you see that what is that from I'll give you a close-up of that so you'll notice when you activate that switch whoa it's an activator it's, a, it's an act but it's not a self activator okay you know you're, you're gonna have to uh, check in does it do anything yeah it does yeah check out what happens with the neck pickup All right. when you, acti when you say, activate uh, that switch okay ready I'm gonna start with the bridge I've have on all these right we were uniform. Brightest one yet? Yep. Thank <laughs> you. 
got the position two in position three here. Yeah. Because of the switch. You heard that immediately. <laughs> is you're essentially adding your neck pickup to anything that the neck pickup isn't already chosen for. I see. Okay, so the neck pickup. you're doing is you're adding the neck pickup the neck pickup to yeah, whatever you've seven. chosen yeah. i see yeah as a matter of fact so you're going to get like oh, that no, fourth you yeah. know that fourth position on a five-way switch yeah you're going to get that fourth position if you I got and then you activate it i see it i got you cool <laughs> To, uh, yeah. It's so hard to do it with a key. Here. You can hear it though. I mean, it's like definitely yeah. right. It's nice. Hey, so right? this is technically. Right. I see. And in the middle. Right. Okay. That's the middle position. Now technically, this should. See that? I got you. You with me? Yes. So anytime this is flipped, it's pretty much whatever position you. you're in when that pickup you. is added. Yeah. Sweet. Dude, killer. They're nice guitars, man. You know what's crazy, man? Is just hearing the four of them right now. Yeah. I have like some thoughts. Yeah. Over all of them. Yeah. You know. What's happening? What's happening? Well, I'll tell you what, man. I I think as far as like uh, a strat that sounded the sweetest to me, mm -hmm. just crystal clear and just mm -hmm. beautiful and exactly what I wanted to hear was the first one. Yes. Right? I agree. To me, that's a that's a maple board Stratocaster. I agree. It just felt to me, everything you played on it, it was yeah. almost like, yeah, that's a maple board Strat. You know, you look yeah. away and that's what I it is. Agree. For sure. The second one, I thought was the closest to a Rosa board, yeah. where I couldn't even tell that you right. were playing a maple board Strat. Maybe on one of the pickup settings, it was a little yeah. bit, there for me right. but it was very it was another great guitar very rock and rolly in the yes. uh, for a maple board you know yeah. strat yeah. the third one um i thought was a the one that you said sounded really good acoustic was that yeah. the third one yeah i thought that guitar was was wonderful yeah. and, and and that out of all of them to me seemed like the guitar that would be the most versatile right you know, and then when you come up to the first one, this one's cool if you want to experiment and do some stuff with, yeah. you know, yeah. and it has a place, but that's the, that's where right. I would be on, on, on yeah. this list. I like them all. I think my favorite was the first one. Yeah, yeah, right? I think that's I think it. So, yeah. Let's get that one back again. That's it. Let's get that one back. Let's see what we got. This is most like mm -hmm. a maple board strat. Killer. I think. Yeah. It sounded great. Great. <laughs> You think, yeah?
First one with the with the, the three screws, that being fifty seven. Fifty seven. Right. What's yep. the price tag on that? Fifty k. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty k. That's right. right. Nice. So then we go from here to yes. uh, fifty nine. No, nope. I'm sorry. Let's go to the other fifty eight. Fifty eight. Yeah, the other fifty eight, being a two tone, is going to be fifty grand. Fifty grand. Right, and then fifty eight going into the three tone. Is going to be 42, 42.5. 42 and then that one, I think, is a later period, 58. Yeah. Right? Marking 32.5. 32.5. That's it. And I think that this one got this one got a $10,000 hit because of that right. manipulation right. there with that switch with the neck pickup. You yeah. know? $10,000. $10,000 hit? Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome, man. That's I'm great. switching. Yeah. Great. What's your personal favorite, Corey? Oh, this is great. Yeah. We got uh, that the. You missed a bit of the last one. I did, but that was the yeah, 59? Yeah, yeah, 59. Oh, that was, you didn't. You, I, see, I, you were here for that. I got temporarily, uh, yeah, got, I got rerouted. Yeah, rerouted. I got rerouted. Rerouting. Uh, the, so, the, 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 the three-tone 58 is my favorite. Yeah, too. Of these. Do we have a Rosewood uh, strap around? Yeah. Uh, do we can plug in? Do we have one around? What, one Interesting, three? plug one in. The 63 is in my office. That's the one you just yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, let me grab it. Let me grab it. You, I'm gonna run grab upstairs it. and grab it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. We can see just in your office. office. Also, yeah, yeah. Too, I'm gonna grab it. Did you just to just uh, hear a difference? No, you guys keep going. Okay, Ben. We'll, we'll, we'll pause until he gets back, right? Exactly. Anyway, yeah. uh, so where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this place is like a playground, man. I mean, what do you do all day? You just sit around and play these guitars all day. You know what you do? When you're not on the phone dealing with customers? I think you know a little better than, yeah. than that. And you know, it's funny because people say that all the time. They go, man, you must just play every single guitar in here. And it's like, maybe for a couple of minutes every day. Okay. Um, I definitely familiarize myself with everything yeah. that we have. And when other people are trying stuff, I'm holding yeah. the other item that they're about to try. So I kind of get a little bit of a feel for it. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah. What are the hottest sellers lately at Grooms? What have you guys been, you guys been doing? Well, like just a, in general, acoustics, yeah? yeah, just in general, acoustics. Martin Acoustics, Martin uh, acoustics. which oh. is, it, it should be no surprise, yeah. but we have the Sinker yeah. uh, Mahogany yeah. Acoustics, which are Sinker Mahogany, nice. backsides, nice. neck, end block, neck right. block with an Adirondack top right. and right. Adirondack bracing. Right. That's, we haven't had one of those in for a while, um, and getting them back in lately, they've been taken back off. I expect that to be the hottest seller. Right. We were just talking about the hottest sellers lately in, in, uh, in the store. Acoustics, man? A lot of acoustics. Yeah. A lot of acoustics, but at the same time, everything that's electric that we get, we move pretty fast. Right. Very fast. So, um, juniors. Juniors are hot. Junior specials. Jazz masters and shit like that. Oh, I, yeah. I just took in a yeah. Jazzmaster today. You did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are really good. Um, you guys talked about price price increases in the last couple of years. No, no we no. haven't really touched on yeah. anything like that yet. Um, well, I guess we're done. We can. We should. We should. You, we can. I mean, Absolutely. for what it's worth, man, like, like everything changed after COVID. Yeah. You know, so I remember the prices that were rolling around COVID time or just before COVID time. Those are the prices that are etched in my mind. You know. Totally. But in the last two years, it changed, and it changed in such a slow, thoughtful, almost thoughtful way yeah. with regards to the to this industry of ours, that now prices have almost gone up on select instruments, as much as twenty five or more percent. Oh, if it's, I, I've, I've I've seen it go up more than yeah. more than twenty, but twenty five percent. You know, it's it's if it's a staple of an instrument, if it's a Martin, eighteen, twenty eight, mm -hmm. twenty one, mm -hmm. you know. 45s, right. 42s, some staples. Um, fenders, 
Strats, Tellies, uh, Jazz Masters have really come up uh, in juniors. recent times. But you, that, you, can't, okay. yeah, you can't give a junior stock in. No. It's like, no. Hey, what about like SG Special and shit like that? That's the other one, yeah. yeah. That's great. I remember, hell, we did a homeschooling video in the break room upstairs where right. we were chatting about Les Paul SGs right. and how I thought there was a lot of room still left in them. And there is. And, and I remember at the time I was like, where are they at? Like 16, 17? Right. And you're like, oh, no, more than that, bro. They're right. like over 20. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Well, think about when we did that video. Right. Um, they're easily a clean one, 61. Right. 25. 25. Easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like that for, for that she's Easy. Well, that, that same guitar was 15, 16 grand. But think, of, think about it this way. Just It seems like just yesterday, single cut Les Paul Juniors, mid 50s, let's say 56, right. it was a $10,000 guitar, right? Absolutely. And, and we were all like, damn, that's a $10,000 guitar. Right. Wow, 10,000 bucks. Thirteen to $15,000 now, depending on the condition. Which is crazy. You know, but this is the thing. How many of those are in that's that right. condition? That's right. That's I right. mean, we were joking around a minute ago, uh, looking at, at those guitars on the third floor, and uh, you guys got two incredibly clean old left-handed guitars. That's right. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, you got a uh, what? This is Esquire. Fifty-seven. Fifty-eight Esquire. Fifty-eight Esquire, Esquire that looks brand new. Yeah. And a sixty-three uh, special. And a sixty-three SG special left-handed. That's right. So now here's the question: you never see no. Ever and, and it's a killer guitar. The two, the two vintage instruments that we have in stock, yeah, left that are happen to be yeah. left-handed, are also the cleanest instruments we have in the building. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. So they're lefty and clean. It, that's the that's what came up, and that right. was the question that yeah. why. Yeah, usually when you see left-handed guitars, old left-handed, they're, yeah. they're cleaner than right-handed yeah. guitars. Would you agree? I would think probably because they spent all that time and energy to find it, and then the kid just didn't play it. Yeah, didn't play it. That SG special is amazing. God, it made me wish I was left-handed. Yeah. That thing's killer. He was going to town on it lefty, oh, too. Dude, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. He really were we playing it lefty? Yeah. yeah. I, I actually learned how to play left-handed guitar because I used to hang around with a guy that had nothing but left-handed guitar. true. So I could turn the strings upside down and play it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. All upside down, corded over. Yeah, I want to see you play it backwards now. I can't do that. <laughs> Come on, I man. Do I, do that. That. I can't yeah. do that. But that's really interesting about, about lefty instruments yeah. being clean like that. Yeah. Honestly, that Esquire from 58 is so clean. It's beyond clean. I have never seen a right-handed instrument that clean. No. I don't think I have either. Nor have I seen a Lefty 58 Esquire before. So what is the price point generally on left-handed guitars versus right-handed guitars? That's a great question. If you had a, I if you had a, a question. let's say you had a 1960 Rosewood board Telecaster, 9.5 out of 10, both guitars, you had a righty and a lefty. What, what I, have my, I have my thoughts on this. Point. I have my thoughts. Have you want me to go first? I'll go you first. Go. Here's Let's my thoughts, man. I think the premium comes on a vintage guitar when it's clean. Yeah. When it's original and clean, right? To add a premium, an additional premium to it because it's a left-handed player is not smart. Um, why? Because your pool is much, much smaller. Of, right. of buyers out there. What's one out of every 30 players might right. be left-handed? I don't know, 20? Who the hell knows, you know? Um, I agree 100%. Yeah. I don't think there should be. But there is. Well, people ask way more money for it. They do. But are they getting it? Exactly. Yeah, That's right. the thing. And I don't know about that because I don't know anybody that plays left. Right. No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> no, I don't no, know too many yeah. left handed no, guitar players. It's rare yeah, but you, I, I bet you know, you probably worked with a ton of left handed guitar okay. players. Not many. Yeah, no, okay. I can't imagine. I mean, think about it, bro. I've been, I've been doing guitar repairs for a long time. Every, right. all, all the cats, everybody. You name it. And I don't remember. A left-handed instrument going on my bench right. on a regular rotation. It's probably hard to work on a It's just back. It's just. I mean, same rules apply. It's yeah. just backwards Weird. or upside down. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's all the same. The only thing I can't do to it is actually give it a shot to see right. if it plays pretty well. Right. But I rely on the math, and the right. math is great. Right. You know? right. um, but uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Not very many left-handed yeah. instruments. Uh, um, if any, there's any lefties out there that want the cleanest Esquire ever made, it's, it's here. Crazy. Super nice. Let's try out this yeah. 63 strat, you say? Mm -hmm. Well, let's, get, let's go back to, uh, let's check out the bridge pickup on this and get against the bridge pickup on that and see what we got. Okay, see if there's any difference in the tone.
see what it does. We even have a corporate tuner. We're really prepared for today. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. I'll take this cover off because nobody's playing the cover. You can't play with the cover. Here we go. Everything on 10. <laughs> Definitely, I don't know it, what's contributing to this, but yeah. this is this is definitely what I'm hearing. It, yeah, that's w way woodier. Right. There's well, just this it. woody thing that's happening woody. with this woody. thing, and it's just undeniable. Look how low the pickup is. Yeah, it's crank, crank, it's crank all the way down. Yeah, it's crank down. So uh, let's try the neck pickups. Uh, here we go. Neck pickup, rosewood board. That's actually pretty high. Right. No, uh, it's cocked. It's, good. it's cocked. So that people can yeah, yeah, can, yeah. can can go. Yeah. That's exactly what we've got going on. Because right. that's what's going on. But that's more, way more aggressive. Mm -hmm. But there's more tone mm -hmm. coming out of right, this. Right. Now I don't know if that's the pickups. I don't know right. if it's because you've got an ash. Uh, well, you've got a, just a post ash body. Yeah, that nice would be an older body. Try this middle pickup. Ready? I'll do the same shit. Middle pickup. <laughs> Uh, 
go first. You, let's do this in reverse right, order. Right, right, I got right, some. Right, some right, right, right. Want me to go first? Yes. Okay. Uh, with what you were playing, right. sounded to me better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was c- the clarity yeah. and the brightness came through. For what you just played, if you had way the better. opportunity to play either guitar, I would say you should probably play it all, on this because long. it sounds way better. All day long, it's louder, it's, it's louder and clearer. But it's. Again, it was what you choose, right. what you chose, you chose to, to play. play. So here's the question: um, Do you can you make something? Because that was pretty obvious. Obviously, it sounded better right. than this, you know. Right. So the question is to that: um, I wonder if you could play something on that, where it's noticeably not as good on this. On the middle, I, yeah, yeah. Middle like side. let's go back and forth to it, where yeah, you know, yeah. like, like uh, playing something that this will kind of buckle in the same way that that one kind of. Let's see what we do. Let's try just some straight R and B shit. Let's see what happens. Middle sound, right? Um, things yes. and it's woody and you hear that stuff yeah. wherever i just think that's a very special maple board strategy yeah. it's it's it, the first yeah. you played it without even me hearing the other three right. i was just like that's the best one yeah for sure there's something about it that, yeah. I, it's hard to we, we try to do a good job of explaining some of that stuff sure. you know and but that that has so much going for it it's so yeah. musical that instrument and it's very yeah. um, um it, it's very specific i'll tell you this though yeah. and and this is one of the things that um I don't hear many people talking about, right? right? And that's um, uh, guitars that are forgiving. Yeah, that is not a forgiving guitar. No. So in the hands of a of a of a, of a proper musician, right. that can be the 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 Excalibur of the yes, pile or whatever it might sure. be. However, yeah. at the hands of a person that's not there, it it ex- it actually makes you sound worse than you are. It brings out bad things in you. 100%. You you playing some of these single notes up there? Some of the most unforgiving oh, things you can dude, play. Probably. Your guys know that, right? Right. And when you leave a note up in the air oh. and it's right on a feather, yeah. it's just right there. Yeah. Ultimate control, and I get yeah. that. Um, when you when you have that skill, you can make an instrument like that That's sound fact, so man. good. Although in the hands of a person not right. as good, this might be a more forgiving I instrument agree. for them. I agree. Thoughts. I have to agree. Um, it just so far everything that you've played on mm-hmm. this guitar mm-hmm. has been like my new favorite thing yeah. that you've played. But mm-hmm. uh, I just I think that there is something oh, yeah. that we could find for this that that oh, this yeah. can't do. Well, but we, we don't have all day long to sit here and go through <laughs> or a band. Yeah, I or think a right. player. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think like what what I what I'm noticing bigger than anything is like the neck. In the middle, all day long on that. In the bridge, or a neck in the bridge all day long on that. In the middle, on this. Oh, is that right? right. For me, yeah. 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 Look, the difference between the middle and yeah. the. I gotta tell you yeah. something, man. The, the the neck pickup on there is pretty special. All right, let's do a neck pickup shootout, and then we'll end this eighteen minute video. Yeah. Or eighteen hour video. Ready? Here it comes. Neck pickup. Uh, I'll do some open string shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
best because that, in my opinion, was that not the That's perfect right. thing for him yeah, to play yeah, on this? Yeah. Sounded great on here. Yeah, yeah. But sounded better on here. Smokier and more compressed. Yes. That one's like whiny, right? It's, it's got in your it's face. It's really in your face, yeah, definitely, for sure. Massive difference. And uh, you got to think the pickups are probably pretty similar, right? Oh, imagine so. Yeah, you, you're not you, you got to gotta think, uh, you know. Uh, it's just it's amazing what a difference in that can make. Now, you know, I remember when I was a kid, see, I still don't know where I stand on all this. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I had an early 70s Strat that somebody had, that I bought from a guy, it was like a 72 or something, and it had this pencil neck on it, like, it's refinished. Yeah. And, what year? Uh, it was like a 72. Three bolt? Yeah, it was like a skinny three neck. Bolt. And uh, I got a hold of like a 71 neck, maple neck, and it was big and chunky, and I put it on that guitar. And they were both maple necks, uh, but the one was way bigger than the other. Okay. And the whole guitar just came alive. Oh, it really? made a massive difference in the way of the thing. You know, but again, by the time you change a neck, you, should, you yeah. forgot what the other one sounded. But I remember thinking, well, it's a lot better with this neck. Do you think that the whole debate about neck thickness and size being better tone is, uh, is true? So, you know, man, I know yeah. we're almost I'll, I'll go at it, out of time. But, I'll yeah. go at it from a, a repairing yeah. space on yeah. it. I think what makes more of a difference in a chunky neck or a slim neck is how the truss rod was installed. Right. That makes a difference. Um, if it's tight, the kind of truss rod, is there is there a bigger channel that you need in the center of it? Right. You know, th these are all big questions in how do you put your filler strip in, a two-way rod versus a single action rod. Right. All of these make a huge, huge difference. Right. There's also, I mean, to say something like, comparisons for new instruments to old instruments or whatever it might be, especially on electric guitars, I think, um, having a certain type of truss rod, like a dual action truss yes. rod, the channel that you route to for the neck to be able to accept that is yes. a much bigger route than you would for a single action rod. And on a single action rod, you actually put a piece of wood to sandwich it over the top. It's called the filler strip right. before the board goes back yeah. on. On a two-way rod, it's a channel Rod goes in with two dollops of silicone, and then the, the board goes back on. So now, does the, the thickness or the thinness of the neck have to do with the way the instrument sounds? Probably, yeah, because of the mass. However, it's what you can see that's killing your tone. So the type of truss rod that you have and how it was installed, I think, makes a huge, huge difference. Probably bigger than the actual dimension. Yes. Which is my opinion. Yes. I can't argue with that because right. that's... Yeah, that's science. I mean yeah it's it, science, it, it, science. Uh, but uh, I will tell you this I think it brings it brings me kind of back around to the beginning of where when we started this thing earlier today which was probably when we start this like yeah. uh, eight o'clock this morning yeah eight we're just finishing yeah, up now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. what do you like better uh, chocolate or vanilla mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. you know we both like ice cream so but it's but yeah. interestingly enough you, I know the, I don't want to interrupt you. I want to finish. No, no, go saying. ahead. I want but, you to. But going back, like, 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 with you, you know, you're a rosewood guy. You're a rosewood yeah. guy over maple, right? Yeah. You, you've said this for a long yeah. time, right? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. We picked out some great guitars here. That rosewood one's great. These other instruments are great too. Yeah. This is pretty special, I think. Yeah. Okay. If you were to own both these instruments yeah. and they were in your arsenal, yeah. And you had gigs set up for yeah. the next X, whatever it might be. Which one would get more more attention? Which one would get more use for a live gig? No, I'm talking for, for studios. Recording. Yeah, man, they probably both would. I mean, I like that middle sound. That's for sure. You can get on it. Right? What about live? Does that change anything? Um, it's more of what you like to play live, isn't well, it? Well, I mean, I think I would have to go for the for the fatter bridge pickup on a live. On a live so which one ever has the fatter bridge pickup? Which got it? Because well, that's the, really interesting. You yeah, go on a strat for the fat. Yeah, because then you got to play those solos and stuff. You don't really want all that crazy got top it, there. Got it, got it, got it. You want to kind you of know, be yeah. able to, that woodiness kind of yeah. makes you blend a little you bit. You don't, you don't. Sometimes. Yeah. See, this to me, on a strat, this this right here, for leads. this is the key. Yeah, for leads. For everything. Yeah. If, if this thing is yeah. good, if, yeah. if I plug yeah. this thing in and, yeah. I, and I go, the first thing I do is I come up to the neck, yeah. and if that thing grabs me, I go, wow, that's a good guitar. That's a good guitar. Wow, do, that thing sounds let's great. Let's do this one last thing, and then we'll shut shut the camera down. You guys have stayed this long. You guys are real troopers, okay? Let's go for a big lead sound. I got my uh, distortion pedal here. Uh, Don't. I won't hurt anything. Don't worry. Uh, 
So, so I was gonna say, guess he's gonna. No one's gonna hear. You do what you gotta do, bro. Oh, we're not. We're not gonna be talking too much tonight, guys. Yeah, no, we're good. Yeah. Uh, I'll just do a, lead, a bit of a lead thing. Uh, just a lead thing, okay? I'll set. I'll set the corporate pedals right where they normally go. I won't hurt anybody. Okay, just a little bit. Of... looked at each other and said the same thing it's yeah. just the the woodiness is coming out of it i mean mm -hmm. super super the personality of this what you had going on there uh right. not on the aggressive side but he said creamy and that's yeah, definitely that's creamy. creamy you know you know you, you know you always do this thing where you go you know whose guitar that is yeah okay and i thought about this guitar and yeah. how special it is how amazing and and a person that would absolutely rip this thing up yeah and i think it's his sound yeah you know you, you know what i'm talking about kenny wayne. yeah bro kenny this is wayne. a kenny wayne shepherd guitar totally bro. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, that, it, yeah. um, very aggressive very yeah, aggressive yeah, yeah. in the hands it's so of, funny that you said that. right it totally is. are you this watching is, kenny Ken, this you is your guitar yeah, bro. Man. he's it, watching dude it, yeah. it's like uh, his tone yeah. every time i've heard him yeah. side stage it's one of those things bro like yeah i, I go with unforgiving yeah and kind of wrestling right. all the stuff yeah. together, dude. Unforgiving in yeah. his tone, you know. I mean, yeah. even doing like line checks yes. with his guitars, you know, some of that like that white track you're yeah. going through and you're going, yeah. and you're listening to the amp is this right? Yeah, it's too bright, it's yeah. too bright, or whatever yeah. it might yeah. be. And you, you go listen in. Yeah, he's got like he's got bass in his fingers yeah. or something. I don't yeah. know what he's got, man. Yeah. But sure. it's definitely that's yeah, that, he'd love that right. Guy. Yeah, he'd definitely love it. That's awesome, man. Man, this is great. This, has been, a lot. this has been cool. And going back and forth like this on yeah. all really, really makes a lot of sense. I don't think I've ever sat down like this with all these strats. Yeah, and actually straight just maple yeah, and maple, 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 mm -hmm. maple, and that. Who are you? Different. It's the shootout. Who are you? And, and we gotta do more shootouts. Who are you? Don't don't come in here and say hello to the camera. Don't don't do it. Don't, no, go ahead, George. Just, <laughs> hello. <laughs> come a little closer. Uh, come on, closer. Uh, come on come man. I didn't. You're perfect timing. Yeah, there you go. Perfect timing. Yeah, I'm just we're just wrapping it up, George. George, George. If you had to play a maple neck, I know you don't care about electrics, but if you had to play a maple neck or a rosewood neck Stratocaster for the rest of your life, what would you pick? I'm hard pressed to say because I don't like to play electric guitar. Right. I'm terrible on it. But while I think the maple neck guitars bring more money and are historic. There's something about the slam board strats that makes really good sense. And I think in some ways that the slam board strat might be the ultimate strat 
for a lot of people. Yes. And it might be, if I had to put electric, I might as well go for the slam board early strat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, we, we just shot out four Maple Mike strats, and mm -hmm. this one kind of, it's a top dog. This one's a great one. Yeah. It's a top dog. This one's a great one. This one's yeah. a great one. They're all great. They all well, do How does the it. best rosewood board one? We only have one. How does it stack up? It's, it, it was, it's, it stack up nice. It, it well, holds its own and more. If you want to watch a video there. Well, there's the something one. about the <laughs> for bending strings yes. like rosewood. Yes. Which is really interesting. Uh, I have some commentary on this. Well, go ahead. Yeah. I also think there's a difference in tone. Oh, big time. To have that rosewood thick board. Yeah. And I think the thick slab rosewood board is definitely better than any of the curved boards. Yeah. Yeah. And your earliest memories of selling Stratocasters when you first started, 1970. Oh, it was before first that. Store. Well, when you first opened store. No, okay. I was selling Strats before. That. Okay, so what is the cheapest you remember them selling for? Well, when I was a student at the University of Chicago, I stopped at a pawn shop on 63rd Street. And they had a strat that I bought for seventy-five dollars. It was a fifty-seven. It was squeaky clean, new condition. It had gold-plated metal hardware, and it was black finish. And you thought you got taken? No, oh. I didn't. I knew damn well it was worth more than seventy-five dollars. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. But there was nobody hardly who wanted one. No, yeah. yeah. Clapton wasn't playing one. And this was like 1965. What do you and think? Hendrix uh, wasn't well known, and back then Les Pauls were much more valuable right. than Stratocasters. So I found a guy. I thought I was really, really, really lucky. He had an early '61 Les Paul Custom that was still single cutaway black with triple humbuckers, yeah. and I traded him straight even for it. And Fantastic. these days. That strat would be worth a goodly bit more That's than right. Les Paul. Oh, yeah. But back then, everybody congratulated me on how <laughs> great. Uh, great. Uh, you did and good. later, I traded three Les Pauls to get one Master 400 Stromberg in New York. Fascinating. Which these days, any one of the Les Pauls would be worth yeah, more yeah. than that Master 400. Absolutely. But back then, I was really happy as could be to have a Master 400 Stromberg Blonde that was beautiful. Everybody knows that you sold Clapton those early strats that he built Black Yacht. Not everybody knows Not that. Not everyone knows. Well, I yeah. think most people know. But no, no, no. one thing that people don't know, if you probably don't remember the exact number, but roughly in the ballpark, how much was a strap back in those days? $400. Yeah, you know, I didn't get over four hundred dollars for any of the strats I sold to him. I sold him four strats in nineteen seventy for about four hundred dollars each. Right. But keep in mind, uh, four hundred dollars back then would buy you a squeaky clean dot inlay fifty nine three thirty five. Right. Uh, Eight hundred to a thousand would get you a sunburst hall. And in nineteen sixty nine. 1500 could get you a lower F5. So things have changed a mite bit. And you know, when I went to the guitar show this past weekend, I got that accordion for $150 that cost $500 new in 1932. Mm. And in the 30s, you could have bought for $500, you could have gotten two D45s plus a D28 herringbone, which today, instead of $500, that would be about 1.2 million. And, uh, but instead, you could have bought a uh, Needless Ultra number nine bacon for $900, which would be worth about 40,000. Uh, you could get a Super 400 Gibson for 400. You could have bought two D45, and we have a Super 400 for $22,500 at 1935 first issue. You could have bought 25, $20 gold pieces. Gold was $20 an ounce in 1932. That would be 25, ounces of gold today at two thousand dollars an ounce would be fifty thousand dollars so, the, so or you the, could put the same amount in martins and yeah. get 1.2 million so the moral of the story is 
never get into the accordion business. <laughs> well, <that's bad. laughs> but it, it still gets down to none of them has been as good an investment as Martin's would have been in the 30s. In fact, in the same catalog, you get a gross of heavy, large tortoise shell picks, a gross of them for $34. And that means a gross, at, if they were $100 a pick now, that would be fourteen thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. But uh, let's see, one hundred and forty-four in gross. Yeah, one hundred and four. Or one U in a gross. Hundred dollars <laughs> each. Yeah, that's dollars. Okay, okay, I'm actually embarrassed today. Or would <laughs> if you put if yeah. you spent sixty dollars, right. you could have gotten an OM twenty. Uh, a 118 Martin would have been about 60 grand. Okay. So the Martins have been better than tortoise shell picks, they've been better than accordions, they've been better than banjos. It, yeah. Yeah, let me ask you this. I'm going to tilt the phone a little bit so we can see it because you're over here. Can I do that? Can I tilt yeah, the Yeah, yeah, give it a little tilt. Um, investment in Stratocasters wouldn't have been bad. Let me ask you this, George. Um, all your, what, 53 years now? I've been in business in this shop. Uh, in growing, you know, basically growing guitars, January 1970. So that would be good. 53 years, years four now. months. Is there one person uh, that pops to mind that's bought the most guitars from you hmm. in history? That's an excellent uh, question. Marcel Dadi bought a lot because he had a music store, okay. and he bought several hundred guitars. But um, Billy Gibbons bought over a hundred. Um, and uh, Rick Nielsen bought over a hundred. Clapton may have bought about eighty-five. Vince Gill has bought over a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So th there's a number of people who have bought over a hundred. I gotta be in the hundred club. You're close. Yeah, yeah. you're definitely. You're I'm not trying super to compare close. myself oh, yeah. to those guys, but I'm just oh, saying. Yeah. I gotta be in the hundred club. You're in the hundred club. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. bought a hundred from us. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's the club. Yeah, yeah. 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 Last yeah. week. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's bought a hundred coming last handful of years, but not track of that anymore. That's that's fascinating. But uh, I'm still having fun. I just come in six days a week and have fun. Yeah, it's uh, you know, but I put every bit of retirement fund I have is I, I, I put that all in the account for starting a guitar factory. Right. So uh, now I can't afford to retire. Right. But why would I want to retire? I'm excited. Yeah, I, I, all I do is come in and do fun stuff every yeah, day. Yeah, you need so. a new challenge in life, and you got it. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I, I don't want to go to retirement. I, I'm not going to go, I don't go golfing. I don't go fishing. You're probably terrible golfer. Well, the only time I, there was somebody who tried to teach me golf, and he claimed I had a natural talent for driving it. Why would you the just naturally assume that, though? I would One time, golfer. I hit the ball, and it went to the I pond. think you're jealous, because he's actually a fantastic golfer. I bet he is. Oh, <laughs> One time, I, I hit the ball into the pond, okay. and there were frogs and turtles there. You, you want to go like get, that? You want to go get the ball? Yeah. Well, I went up to the pond, and there were frogs and turtles. Yeah, he likes the frogs Another time, it went into the creek. You yeah. know what? You can flip rocks, and there were salamanders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other time, when it went onto the green, it was boring. He's yeah. in a wildlife. Yeah. Oh, I got wildlife. Yeah. The fun stuff was all when the ball didn't yeah. go where the bar right. golfers would want it to. Yeah. But all I wanted to do was, yeah, I, I like nature studies. I got a nature study in the middle of the green. Yeah, I got you. It's boring. Yeah, man. All right. So, all right. Uh, no, I'm not. I don't have it in me to be a golfer. Anything else you want to tell the people? We're closing up this video. Yeah. Guitars are more fun than anything else I can imagine. That's right. I've been running the shop, I've been collecting since 63, but I've had the store for 53 years and four months. Now, it has been a bumpy ride at times, but at this point, it's more fun than it's ever been. And Love part it. of it is Love I've got a great staff. Dude, He's one of them. He He's the another staff. one. But I have Eric as yeah. manager and company president, yeah. Greg doing repair and other special projects. George, do you think... Tony in repair. Do you think... Rob in sales. And they make my life fun, but this place makes my life fun. All the people it's I amazing. meet. You've created an amazing this world. This is... But... Amazing. The instruments are fun, and the people that yeah. I meet here yeah. and get to talk 
And but I learned from everybody who comes in. If you show up and listen, you yeah. can learn from them as well as talk to them. That's right. This is a one of my chances of getting a key fob, even though I'm not an employee. <laughs> You already you got one of your I've seen you use I, I your own key fob in do. here. <laughs> You're on, bro. Like, it's on, like, yeah. we're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. This is kind of nice. We're good. He's going to start clocking in. He's going to start pushing the clock. It's amazing. Okay. All right. We should sign off. We should sign off. Everybody, thanks for the video. Take care, guys. All right. All right, homeschoolers, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. See you later. Uncle Larry, over and out.